Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. So I am just adjusting my cameras so that I can see everything and uh, popping up my Facebook page so that I can see any comments and good there. So today um, we're going to work on one of our Oh, sorry, got to reach our wooden Christmas stocking cutouts. Now, as you can see, this side is painted, but this is what they look like on the back. They come raw wood. They've been laser cut, so you might have some of these little marks that come from the laser cutting. Um, but I also thought I'd share with you how most of I have one that I'm still playing with, but I want to share with you all of the Christmas epoxy pours that we did the other day, including the skull and the big star and the ornaments. They came out super, super cute. So you might have seen some of my reels doing this, but I thought I'd share them in person. So here is our little Christmas tree that we did with the uh, star in it. And you can see the front and the back both have glitter and wonderful stuff sticking out. Now here, when we did this, there was, there's a little indentation in the mold that says Mary. So I just filled it in with a little bit of gold epoxy. So the Mary reads clearly. And I did that with like a little toothpick kind of dabber thingy. I know that was a very technical term. Um, I just don't remember exactly what I used. I can't remember if I used a popsicle stick or a toothpick or whatever. Now here you've got the bell that we poured with the gold and the tinsel glitter. Now, I will be very honest, when this was poured, you could see the tinsel glitter through the deer, but it really doesn't show up anywhere in the front because I didn't like really balance the pour out. If I had thought about it a little more carefully, um, I would have poured a little more tinsel glitter up front because then we would have had both showing. But the deer insert in here, I filled in with silver epoxy and it came out super cute. So I was very happy with this. Um, here is our big Christmas star pour. So you saw me pour the red glitter, the green um, alcohol ink. And then on the back, we used art resin epoxy pigment in true silver to back the whole thing up. And in the center of the star, we used a little bit of our tinsel glitter mixed into the epoxy. So I really, really love how these came. this one came out. I'm doing one in pink as a gift for somebody. So I think uh, these are really coming out nicely. That's the last thing I have to pour. Um, also, this is my son's Christmas skull. We did red and glitter. We did a little gold stripe. We did a little silver stripe. And then we did the bottom in green and glitter. This is, my kid loves anything skulls. So this will be his Christmas skull. Now the last thing I want to show you, and unfortunately I set it just outside my reach, so give me just a sec. I wanted to show you the final charcuterie board that was created with whatever products I had on my shelf. Um, this is uh, the whole um, video for this is on our YouTube channel. Uh, but sometimes you have a client who you want to create something special for. Um, and you've, you've done their kitchen or their dining room or something. You'll probably have leftover products. This is a great way to use them. We use several different plaster products. We put some stuff in stencils, then we colored it, wiped it back, and poured epoxy on it. Now our epoxy's food safe. I'm very pleased with how this came out. This is going to be a gift for somebody. Uh, so I'm, I'm really loving the way things have been going the last uh, couple of days here in the studio. So we had a lot of fun creating gifts. Now I'm going to flip the camera down. I got to dust stuff off because of course, as I move things, things get dusty. So let's flip this camera down and we're going to work on our stocking. I will show you what I use to get to where I'm at so far. And then we're going to embellish and do wonderful things today. 
Okay, so let me catch my camera, see if I've got here. So as you can see, this is not painted a solid color. Um, I mixed a little set coat metallic true gold with some set coat uh, metallic champagne toast. Got sort of a mid-tone taupey brown in metallics. Then I used some of the champagne in the center and I even used a little matte metallic set coat white because I wanted sort of a shadow around it and a highlight in the middle and I did very similarly with this. So this is the color that I mixed. It's pretty much halfway between metallic true brown and metallic champagne toast. Um, if you look at the two colors, you can see where I went. I went, it's probably a little heavier on the champagne toast because a dark pigment like true brown can eat up a light color, especially in metallic. So if you were mixing this, just play with your color until you get what you want. Let me seal this back up so I don't spill it everywhere. And then on this, I use the meta matte metallic white, uh, snow white and use the champagne toast around the edges again because I wanted sort of a little bit of a rustic look. Um, you know, I do a lot of this stuff and it's very contemporary, but actually my own personal style happens to be a little more traditional. So I thought I'd share, and this is going to be a gift for someone as well. So I thought I'd share how I got there and what we're going to do next. Now this is nice and dry. So we're going to use our, um, transfers. This is one's called uh, Postal Birds. Usually, the reason that's called, sorry, I had to think for a second, why is it being called Postal Birds? Oh, I know why. Because a lot of these bird images have stamps with them and stuff like that. Now, you can use these on a drawer front. Um, this has, obviously it has a grid pattern here. So you can do it that way. You can, uh, clearly you can cut them apart and put them on any way you want. Um, the only thing that transfers, it looks like it's white, but it actually isn't. The film that it's mounted on is frosted. And so the lettering transfers, the dotted lines do not transfer, just the birds and the writing. The dotted lines and stuff in here are help to help you keep everything nice and level. So we're gonna kind of grab a pair of scissors and we're gonna kind of play with this a little bit and cut some of these apart and place them wherever I feel like placing them. Now, when you order this, flip it this way. It comes in three sheets, to, so if you needed to do them for a drawer front or something. Three different patterns on each one. So these are pretty big birds. So I'm, I'm going to have to be really, really aware of how my birds are sitting on here so that I can take the best advantage of them. So I'm going to, and I also have to think about the fact that this is going to come here. So I want to make sure my bird sits right about there and I may just take my little scissor and put a little tiny mark there so that I know where my images are going to be. So if I want to put this bird right here, it's going to get cut off there. So let's take a look and see which birds I'm going to use where. And this is going to take a minute because I have not planned this out at all. Hi, Tracy. Nice to see you here. Now, these also are set up so that if you do them on a drawer, the patterns will actually line up. Now, it's not... Oh, I crapped up the transfer here, folks. That one I messed up because the paper rolled... That's all right. But these are set up so that they will stack on top of each other nicely. Uh, on a drawer, you can see there's a, uh, there's tape on that. That's not ruining anything. Let's move that. So you can see 
Oh Lord, these just are going to keep shifting on me, and so things are going to get stuck. I'm sorry, but if anybody's going to crap up one of these, it's better me than you. See, these little papers under here want to roll back. So as you can see, there's the top of one bird here, and it actually lines up with this if you do it correctly. So be careful, pay attention. That's not how I'm doing it today, and I already warned you of that, so let's start cutting some stuff apart. Uh, I'm gonna, let's see, how am I gonna go in here? I do try to cut around the lettering in case I want to use it somewhere else. Um, this one will probably never be used anywhere else, so I'm okay with that. Let me turn, set another one, this one to the side as well. Um, if you're not familiar with transfers, they're a great way to decorate. This is one of our newest patterns in here. Um, you can add a lot of detail easily. Now, let's get the name out of here. Smaller scissors would work with something like this too. These are the ones I have here and I don't mind using bigger scissors. I'm comfortable with that. Um, so this is Postal Birds. This is one of our newest patterns. As you can see, it's really, really, really pretty, and I thought this would make a nice change from all the traditionally Christmassy kind of pattern choices. Um, I thought it might be nice to do something very organic. Now I can paint birds. I have painted a lot of birds in my life, um, but I think this is great for somebody who's not as good with figures. And there are figures that I paint that are better than others. Now birds, I'm pretty good with. Um, other things, eh, not so much. So let's put this here. And we're gonna put this here. And I think I'm pretty good with my lineup. Oops, I just knocked it. So I wanna try not to have it go. There's my little mark. I wanna have it try not to go under this. So I'm gonna put this back on here and see what it covers. And let me just that just a tiny bit. I think we're good. All right, now these come with these burnishers. Uh, just checking to see if anybody had any questions. They come with burnishing sticks, but if you lose your burnishing stick, don't worry, a popsicle stick works. So what you want to do is give a push down and rub across the area that you know is going to transfer with your stick. Look how pretty that's gonna be on there. And we're gonna fill this whole thing with the birds and with other little ornamentations that are all part of this. And when it comes off the edge like this, make sure to kind of come along here with your stick on the edge because that's going to help cut the image so that um, it transfers better. But definitely take your time with this because you're going to lift it up bit by bit and then if anything is not laying down correctly, you're going to come back, you're going to burnish it again until it all sticks. So let's get this, and I know that the table wobbles when I do that, so be patient, please. Uh, I can't help the wobble. I'm just too enthusiastic. So as you can see, I'm rolling it back 
completely parallel. Why am I rolling it back like this? Because this removes tension from the surface. If I pull it up straight, I might rip my transfer. If I roll it, I create less tension on the surface and it just comes off easier. Let's get a little bit there. There we go. And again, take your time. You'll see if you got pieces coming up with it. Right there, I have a little bit coming up. My fingernails are always incredibly helpful for this too. Still trying to find a way to get them as a tax right off. But so far, my uh, accountant won't let me do it. Okay. And off carefully, carefully. Just take your time. Do not rush this. This is not like foils where you can just pull it off and it's great. You're going to take your time. You want to make sure your entire image transfers correctly. Now, for whatever reason, that little bit right there doesn't want to leave it almost like a pull off. And it has kind of a vintage look to it, so I'm not being upset by that. So again, I'm going to go back to my other bird. I'm going to scrape with my thumbnail to make sure I'm getting full transfer because for whatever reason right there, that bird, while it transferred the backing, it didn't transfer all the color. He didn't come all the way off here. And the other thing I'm going to do to make my own life easier is to trim down some of this. makes the rolling back process easier. So you can see where I cut it by rubbing right there. So as I'm removing it, some, some of the print colors coming off, it's giving it a very cool vintage look, which I'm very happy with. that if anything hasn't stuck, I'm coming back with it. And of course, instead of my fingernail, I could be using the burnishing stick. If you don't have acrylic nails, um, use the burnishing stick. So look how pretty that is on there. And you can see there's a few little white spots that came up, which means that the color didn't completely transfer. If you look at this, you might see some patches of color still on there. I'm okay with this because to me, this gives it a vintage look. Um, given the fact that I have stuck and unstuck this a couple times, it's probably good part of the problem. Hey, Christine and Lisa and Maddie. Nice to see you here. All right, so let's pick out which one we're going to put on here next. Um, because while I love that, I think that might go over at the toe of the stocking. I think 
I'm just going to kind of trim this one right here and I'm not even going to worry about the lettering. We're just going to fit this one in at the toe and see how it works. I'm going to have to turn things around so they fit here for me. I know they're going to be a little awkward for you all to see, and I apologize for that. Okay, I'm going to trim this down over here a little bit. You know, birds would be such a pretty way to go with this. Uh, sorry, I turn it this way. You know me, I'm always flipping things around to get them to, to lay better. For some reason, I keep folding that spot. It's probably because I did something dumb to it that it's going to cause me an issue later. <laughs> Again, I'm going in here right at this edge, and this will cut the pattern right here so I don't have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of uh, stuff hanging off the edge that I'm going to have to figure out how to clean up. This will just clean up nice and neatly. And as you can see, this dotted line, this is only for laying it out. You don't have to worry about it. It doesn't transfer. It's all just for a printed on the, the mounting film for you all to be able to um, make sure your lines are straight if that's something you're worrying about. Now, obviously, I'm pulling this apart and fitting it to my space. Oh, thank you all for saying hi. I miss it when I don't hear from you. <laughs> um, now, if you're on our mailing list, you've gotten a lot of emails the last few days with our big early Black Friday sale. Um, that also means, though, because I did so many emails to you all this week, I'm going to cut you a little break and not email you again until the weekend. Um, we will be doing a little something for Cyber Monday, but truly our big Black Friday weekend sale was last week. And I hate bombarding people with emails. So we've done our big bombardment and now we're going to give it, you know, lighten up on you because let's face it, it's the holidays. Um, you're going to get a million emails from everybody. So unless it's something I want you to know this next couple of days, I'm going to back off. Look how pretty this is. So again, you can see I'm just rolling it. Backwards, parallel. I'm checking my burnishing. And for anybody who's wondering, yes, my fingers do get tired when I do stuff like that with my fingernails. Um, but I, this is one of those habit, lifelong habits. I've been doing this so long with using my fingernails. Um, when I used to do big jobs in people's homes and put tape on walls, I used to take the tape here and then burnish it with my fingernails. I could, if I had a big job, I'd wear a groove right into the acrylic doing it around the trim. No exaggeration. Now look how pretty that bird looks sitting right there. So let's get, I'm going to turn this this way. I'm going to pull my patterns out. I'm going to see what I want here. I'm thinking maybe our little bird a whole lot of birds facing this way. So let me see what I've got facing the other way. 
Okay, I'm going to tell you this pattern has most of the birds facing to my left. I had, wouldn't have even thought of that as a thing, but apparently it is. So there's that one. Let me see. So I think I am going to take my little bird with my roses here. And then I'll find a couple smaller birds and we'll fit them in and they'll face the other way. It's amazing the things that you kind of just like, wow, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought that most of the birds would be facing in one direction. But you all have seen me do similar things before. And again, I'm going to cut through the lettering here because I want it to kind of wrap with the heel. Um, it's just an interesting thing the way they decide to make things work. Now, yeah, almost all of these birds are all facing to the left. It's fascinating. So let's get that. Let's get that on there. All these different bird pieces and the majority of them face to the left. I would never have thought that that's how they do it. Unless it's pair birds and then the birds and the pairs, one faces one way and one faces the other. Fascinating. I would not have thought that. Um, as you see, I'm trying to wrap them back up on the paper because that protects them so that they don't stick to each other because you've seen them already stick. All right, so let's take our little bird here. And I'm not concerned that this might overlap a little. That's just, we're just gonna embrace that as part of the design. And then we'll get some other birds to put right in here. But I will make sure they face the other way because <laughs> we don't need them all in one direction. That's just kind of weird. It will look like something out of, you know, the, out of Hitchcock's The Birds, you know. I've got psychotic birds all staring at something. Now, I, I'm not sure. I, ha I have to do a little more investigation, but I cannot promise you that these things are exterior rated. Um, I'd still hang it on my front door. Um, I'll put a, a, a top coat with UVLS in it, which is a UV protectant. Fofex makes those. Um, however, that is a special order product. We don't keep that in stock. They don't sell it to me. You know, it's not it's not a typical order. So, if you want top uh, top coat with UV protectant in it, let me know. I'll bring some in so you all can have it. Um, because just because and understand just because a top coat is ex exterior rated it doesn't mean it has UV protectant for anything under it because um, that's not the same thing all right let's go this way Okay, let's start pulling our pattern off. Gently, gently, gently. Again, rolling parallel to the surface. So that everything comes off nice and smoothly with as little tension to do damage as possible. Like I didn't rub any of these leaves or stems. Like I rubbed other stuff and I forgot the leaves and stems. Might be the case because some days it's like I just 
think I've got everything covered and then I don't. And I like to get my fingers up in here because these are, are a, like a thin film that it's been printed on. So taking a second with your finger to kind of smooth it down, make sure it's well adhered is not a bad thing either. Now I will top coat over this, no question, because this stuff is not super durable. It needs a protective coating. Um, this is basically similar to like temporary tattoo stuff and you will definitely want to make sure that um, you take care of it. Now I might take some of this lettering and do it in a little vertical in here, but I'm going to wait until I get my other birds on. All right, so I need a couple of little birds. Let's use this guy, little partridge-like bird there. It's very cute. Uh, where's my scissors? And you don't want to, if you're not using your whole thing, don't throw away this silicone paper because this silicone paper protects the back of your transfers. And the tra that, that area is sticky if you're not familiar with how transfers work. You definitely want to uh, try to protect them. Let's see if I put that here and maybe I get that postage stamp thing in there. Let's try that. And this is why they call them postal birds because we have a postal stamp there and we have another stamp here. Um, when I first ordered these for the studio, I thought they actually were bird postage stamps, but I really think this is so cute this way. Okay, let's put this over this way, and then we're going to lean that postal stamp right over the bird. I love the overlayering because it's translucent. That is not a problem. I love when I can layer things like this. I think it adds interest. So it's not just, you know, one flat layer. Let me see if anybody's got any questions. Hi, Catherine and Christine. Um, let me pull that. Can you embellish? Can I? I'm sorry. Can I order these from uh, Australia? Unfortunately, we do not ship internationally. I'm sorry to say. Um, and there's a very simple reason. Because we don't manufacture all of our products, not everything we carry can be shipped internationally. And it's, I haven't figured out which I can ship and which I cannot. I know that's a horrible thing, but we we have to be very careful because each country's import export laws are so complicated. So this um, this brand is. Let me pull my rolled container up so I can actually tell you. And you see, you should be able to find somebody in Australia. Uh, sorry, my my mouth didn't work quite uh, quite right. The comp the brands. These are redesign. There's a very uh, well-known brand for um, transfers. Um, so these are redesigned by Prima and you should be able to get this brand in Australia. Um, if you're not sure, 
go to Prima's home website. I think it's primadesign.com. Let me see if I can see it on here before I'm lying to you. Uh, redesign with Prima. R-E-D-E-S-I-G-N with Prima. P-R-I-M-A. Uh, and you can find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest, and they should have distributors in Australia. Not that I wouldn't love to take care of you. Um, we just don't sell out of the out of the United States. Um, it's a matter of you know VOC laws. Although I don't think this particular product violates any VOC laws, but because of our paints and everything else. Um, there's a whole lot of international messiness to figure out. All right, let's roll this back. So I hope that answered your question. I'm sorry to say I can't be the one to get it to you as much as I'd really love to. Soon I'll be an international seller. As soon as I figure it all out, figure out what our products, what of our products that I can sell out of the United States, um, what I'm allowed to export without getting in trouble with governments. Uh, everything we have, we carry is California compliant, which means tight standards and our European products are even higher standards than that because of European VOC regulations. I haven't looked into what Australia is. So it's, it would definitely be an interesting thing to think about. All right, I'm gonna see if I might, let's see, how am I gonna do this? I wanna, I don't wanna waste this little bit of leaf so I'm trying to think of where to kind of tack it in here. Let's put it right there. We're going to make this quite full. And I'm sorry if um, it looks like I can't answer your questions. Understand that when I see the screen, um, what's showing up for me is like right up here right up here and it's white and so the print that comes through when you write something on my screen is also white so I have to play with it a little bit to see you see what you're saying I know that sounds silly but this is a Facebook thing our our lettering does not come up when you ask a question in black it comes up in white and so I'm reading white on top of a white piece of paper. Sometimes I flip stuff around just so I can read what you're saying better. Okay, let's, let's pull this back. Oh yeah, that adds a little nice spot there. Okay, let's see what else I've got. I've got, you know, I've got this whole branch that I haven't used. And let's see how I can post this in here. I think what I'm going to do is be careful not to write the lettering, just add the branch right there. So I want to, I really want to make this full and then I'll probably come up and add a little something, something there. Maybe it's just, the, I'll put this lettering there for all I know. But I want, I don't want this to look like I was chintzy on using the pattern. I want it to be really a big part of this. And then we're not going to leave this plain. We're going to put some other stuff over it and make it even cooler looking. Uh, let me go check and see if I got that. Uh, Christina, I know you're saying something there, but give me a second to finish this, and I'm going to turn it so I can actually read what you're saying. You are so lovely for chiming in, and I appreciate it. I just, I'm fighting with the white on white thing here. 
peel this back. Now, if I was really worried about um, how this was going to transfer, if I really wanted to get anxious about it, I would have cut this lettering out. So I'm going to do this for a second because then that's going to give me a chance to read uh, what you all have said. Uh, boy, am I blind. Oh, thank you, Christina. You know, I would love to be selling in Australia at some time. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Julie. Thank you for coming in. Okay, now I'm going to put the screen back. That should just tell you exactly how blind I am because I literally could not see what people were saying because I'm, you know, the, 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 the heart may grow younger, but the eyes sure don't. Okay, so we're going to just use this little bit of lettering up here. I just really want to build this pattern up so it's rich looking. Okay, that was easy peasy. Um, now. Let's take a little look around to see if there's anything else I want to tuck in somewhere. I kind of want to put this here, but then I want to cut it a little bit. So I don't I don't want to have it so that everything gets blocked off. I need to place and then we will do a little lettering right up in there because I'm going to get bottom heavy otherwise. I don't want my designs to be bottom heavy. So we're going to have to put a little bit of something right in here and right in there, I think. And this is really how I do stuff if I haven't carefully, carefully planned it out. Um, I just kind of piece things together a little like a jigsaw puzzle until it looks right. To me. Now, you may not want this as pattern dense as I do, and that's perfectly fine. Like that, like that. Let's take the back half of that word and put it right there because we're not going to waste it. I try to waste as little of my transfers as possible. I have like four or five half rolls in places I, and that's that's a regular thing for me. Uh, okay, let's see what we've got that I can just sort of tag a little something in here. That's, there's that. If I can find something where I don't have to cut apart quite so much. since I already damaged that by getting it stuck. Um, this is a perfect way for me to resolve 
using this is by just sort of putting it over th something here. And it's a little more, a little more here. A little more in that center area. And then we're just gonna take whatever actually comes off. And then the last thing I'm going to do is lay the top piece over here and see if there's something I just want to, I don't want to leave a blank kind of halo where the cap, the topper is on this. So I'll look and see what I have that needs to be filled in. And use a little random piece of something. So I know a lot of people, when they use transfers, they use them exactly how they come off the sheet. Um, I will rarely do that. Uh, I much, much prefer um, layering it and building up the pattern to fit my desires. especially when I have sort of a translucent pattern like I have here that allows me to do that. Okay, now I really, really like how this has come out. Um, I think all of this looks super fun. Now let me take my topper, make sure I got everything. Yep, yeah, that works. I didn't leave anything out. Now. I can leave this like this, but why? Why wouldn't I do something else that's a little more fun with it? So, um, first thing I'm going to do is put a quick layer of set coat clear on here. Why am I doing this? Because what I'm going to do next might be a little sticky on here and I don't want to tear the pattern. So you can use set coat clear, you can use um, Another, you can use a, a water-based top coat. It would all work. Why am I using set coat clear? It's because it's what's sitting right there next to me. So first thing I'm gonna do is seal this up. And that way, when I put the stencil that I'm about to use over this in a few minutes, um, and I will be rushing this, I would tell you to wait at least 30 minutes, let it dry, we won't have that long, but I'm hoping I could get away with 10, 15 minutes, we'll see. But I'm what I'm doing literally is making sure that my transfers are sealed and protected, so what I do for my next layer, which is going to be a stencil, which will have its uh, stencil adhesive on the back, I don't rip up those transfers. So that's going to sit there. And as you can see, I've poured my set coat clear into a small thing. I had a larger jar. It was down to the bottom of it. I wanted to pour it down so it was easier for me to use. I do that all the time. Not everybody does. That is my thing to do. Um, I'm a huge believer in pouring things off when I can just because it... Um, allows me to reseal stuff, have less air in the container, and then I have less waste. Okay, so we're gonna take a little container like this, and we're gonna use some of our Artsyville glass bead gel. Now, this is still sealed up from the move, so I have to untape it. That'll tell you how recently we've moved because, yeah. <laughs> All right, good, 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 good. Now, where are my, my tongue presser sticks? 
Okay, so here's my glass bead gel. I'm going to take a little of this. Now I've got this in its own dries very pretty, but we're going to make it a little more glamorous. We're going to use some of our silver glass bead gels, uh, silver glass bead gels, our silver glass beads. These, we carry these. So I'm going to pour a little in here. Not a lot. I don't want to add so much to this so that um, you don't see the glass beads at all. And I'm going to add a little of our Artsyville soft gold glitter. So we're going to have a little silver. We're going to have a little gold. And then we're going to add a little mica flake to this. This is our natural mica flakes. Now, these are bigger. And actually, I have some. If you want, this, here's a little trick for you. If you don't want them as big as this, um, first of all, there's almost always smaller that settles at the bottom. That just happens the way things settle. But if this is too big for you, it's not going to work for you in the size you need. Like you're putting it through a stencil that has a smaller design like we're going to. Um, you can take it and put it quickly in like a coffee grinder or um, a small uh, food processor like a Cuisinart and quickly give it a quick couple of pulses and grinds and that's what we did here just to get our mic. Now, when I say doing this, um, definitely wear a mask to do this because it will create some powder that you don't want to breathe. Uh, I didn't have time to do the natural ones before we went live, otherwise I'd be using natural. This is um, our gold mica flakes and I had pulsed it down to uh, a smaller size because I knew I was going to, I had used this before um, through a smaller opening stencil. So, and you'll see the stencil we're using and why I'm choosing the smaller mica flakes. Now, Faux Effects also makes some mica flakes. So, theirs come in a black, a gold, a silver, and a pearly white. Um, but that's not what I wanted to use. I wanted to use one of ours. So, again, this is our gold mixture that's in here. And here is our stencil. So this is our new um, flower swirl. Now, I'm not going to be able to get the whole thing right now because it stops right here. So we're going to turn this, excuse me, getting the hiccups, turn it this way so I can get one full side in. Uh, hiccuping like crazy. I have learned to hiccup quietly, but that doesn't mean it's fun. All right, so I want to put this in here and I'll have to work out the repeat on here. Now the repeat goes with these flowers, this flower, this flower, this flower. So it's going to be a little bit interesting when I need to get to this corner, but I'm going to let it sit up and dry a little bit before I do that because what will happen here is it will smush. So I'm going to take a little bit of this, our mixture, and I'm going to use a, whoops, use a I use a hotel room key or a credit card or something like that. I find A, it's flexible, B, it's cheap, and C, um, it's easy to wash. And if it doesn't clean up well, I don't feel guilty by throwing it out. Um, 
but the flexible part is the big part because as you can see I'm not scraping this I'm just sort of buttering it across the stencil that's because if I scrape it the beads and stuff will leave trails in what we're doing and you don't want to see that you want to see the pattern so by doing this I'm smushing product into the stencil opening it looks like I use a ton of product but I actually don't and I'll show you why in a minute just have to work with it for a second so let's get this all on here and this would be really easy for me to miss because I'm doing such a light background and then the stencil you know the stencil mylar is frosted white so pay careful attention to make sure you get all your surface done Okay, so then carefully lift it up. I'm doing this careful, careful. There we go. You can see I have overage. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean off the edges. And as you saw, my stencil stuck to the surface and that was because I used a little bit of basic 3M 77 spray, very, very lightly sprayed it on the surface and then let it set up for several minutes. I think this probably, that 3M on there probably sat up for a good 15, 20 minutes before I used it. Five minutes is usually more than enough, but you don't want to set it down on your surface while it's wet because why? It leaves, um, goo your glue needs to be dry and it will act like uh just a gentle adhesive onto the surface now let me clean all this mess up before i stick my piece back down in it um it will not keep things from bleeding but what it does is it keeps um everything from moving which is what causes bleeding now when this dries and you know probably after the live I'll come back and get this little spot here but when this dries we'll have glass bead gels but we'll, uh, glass bead gel but we'll also have some silver beads we'll have some gold glitter in here we'll have a little gold mica flake and so you'll have some contrast on there it'll be subtle but it will be there and it'll be gorgeous now what are we going to do with this I've got all this product on here this is what you do you go back with your cart you scrape it all off you put it back in the container so you have regained a good 50 percent of whatever it was that you put on the stencil and then you lift the stencil up carefully set it to the side and then you scrape this up too because this is all good usable product and you have not wasted anything now I'm gonna make a little more mixture to go with our birds. And I'll get another. I might put a little more of this, a little more of that in it. But I'll only be able to do one stencil on the live because then this has to set up enough for me to be able to move the stencil over it. Now I can wait a half hour, it won't be, the medium won't be totally clear. We won't be 100% easy for, for um, you know, it won't be 100% dry, but what it will be is dry enough on the surface for me to um, move the stencil around and get a couple more applications of the stencil. And you just keep doing that until it's, fully covered. So here's some more gold glitter, which will look pretty over the birds. Here's some more of our 
gold mica flakes that I lightly pulsed in a food processor to make smaller. Um, put a little more in there. And here are some of our silver glass bead gels. Yes, all of the things that I'm using we carry. So don't definitely take a look on our website if you have any questions about this and can't find something. You know you guys can message me about it. All right, let me mix this all up. Now this might actually, because I put a little more stuff in here, this might actually have more uh, intensity in the design when it dries than the top will. And I'm fine with that because the top is light and the body is darker. I'm just keeping in the same color scheme. Now here's the other thing to know is that you have made this thicker by adding all this stuff. So um, it may absorb some of the moisture in the glass bead gel. So you might want to add a touch of water to it. I'm fine with it this way. Um, but then when you are waiting for something to dry, don't just put a lid on this. Cover it with press and seal because you really need to keep the moisture in here. I've, you, I've been making stuff like this in classes for years and the moisture wants to disappear in this fairly fast. So I'm telling you for all, for all that's good and holy, do yourself a favor. Make sure to cover this with press and seal before you put the lid on it. All right, let me put that top over here. Let me find my stencil over here. Now you could use two different stencils. I'm using the same one because, why? Because I want to. Now, here's the other thing I need to do because this would make, that bead gel would make it really, really hard to put the topper on. I need to grab the topper for a second. And then I'm going to take a little pencil. And I probably should have done this before I put the bead gel on there, but oh well. Okay, let's get the topper on here correctly. Get it on the way I want it. And then I'm taking a little white chalk pencil and doing this, marking the lines. Now you see you got a little bead gel there, big deal. And the easiest way to do this is to tape it. So I'm gonna take a little bit of tape and I'm gonna to have to trim the tape probably because I have to come to points. But I'm gonna take a little tape and lightly, I don't need to burnish it hard, I'm just protecting the surface. going to make it so that the bead gel doesn't interfere with how we set the um, topper on because it will. You don't want to add a whole bunch of texture that then you have to fight with. Do this. doesn't even have to be perfect because quite frankly the stencil will 
deal with any of the irregularities. Oops, a piece tore off. That's useless to me. Garbage. We'll check and see if anybody's got any questions. Oh, thank you. I think it's looking pretty good too. Hey, Donna, nice to see you here. All right, so let's, so again, you could leave it just as it is, but if you've met me, you know that's never gonna happen. I'm gonna always add something to it. Okay. If you saw my quick little reel yesterday, even my reel's like, uh, yeah, Queen of, Queen of Glitter says go by. Because <laughs> I'm always adding stuff to things. It's like making, not leaving the bead gel alone. Not that it's not pretty on its own. It just, I just have to add a little more because that's me. If a little's good, a, more, a lot more is better. Okay, so let's see if I can get this down in here. That I have shredded tape everywhere. There's a little blob of epoxy on my roll of tape, so it doesn't like to always unroll nicely. here. Oh, come on. That can come off. It's going to sit in a wad there. It's in my way. Okay, so now we have that taped off. We can place our stencil back down here. And then when I start um, applying the bead gel, I'll know to avoid the spots where the tape is. It helps me make sure that I do it nicely and don't make a big mess out of stuff because I can do that very easily. Oh gosh, tape sticking to everything for heaven's sake. So again, we're gonna butter this on the surface. Now all of this white will disappear because what is actually here is clear. The glass beads are clear other than the little bits of silver that I put in there. The um, gel that's the carrier for all of this is clear. It just reads white because it's acrylic and acrylic reads white until it's, it's dry. Just like water-based top coats look whitish when you apply them, or uh, gel mediums look white when you apply them and then it dries clear. It's the same thing with the glass bead gel. You just need to let it dry. Um, by tomorrow, most of this will be 100% clear because I'm not applying it super heavy. I'm trying to apply it only you know, as thick as one or two beads roll it into the openings nicely, get my pattern in here. Did I miss anything over here? A little bit right over there. I don't want to miss my edges. As you can see now, it's not dragged across here. It's rolled and it's filled in. So we'll have a nice pattern 
when we're done. Okay, now we're going to lift this off carefully. Oh, great. And I don't think I see any bleeds. Let me I gotta find a place to put the stencil. I have built up so much stuff around myself. I don't know where I'm putting anything. So look how pretty that is. And then our topper will go right like this. Of course, I'm not setting it down right now because there's tape there and I'm gonna let the product set up for just a few minutes before I pull all the tape. And when you pull the tape, just like you did with um, the transfers, you don't wanna pull it up straight like this. A, it can pull off some of this stuff you want to, but if there's things under it, you don't want to do that either. You want to pull gently, pull perpendicular, or I'm sorry, parallel. Perpendicular is would be straight up. Go gently, 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 because then you're not going to pull up any transfers. You're not going to pull up any of your pattern. This is from many years of pulling tape and plaster on walls, I promise you. You don't want to let this stuff set up and then have your tape become part of the pattern, but you also don't want to pull it so aggressively that you have a bad result. Now again, I'm going to clean the stuff off the edges, put it back in the cup. We're going to let this dry for a little while, then I'm going to do my next one, which will be right in here, and then there'll be a third pass that comes right here. And by tomorrow, this will be completely dry, and we'll have this wonderful swirl, floral swirl. Again, this is one of our newer stencil uh, that we just put on here with our bird transfers. It's all on PaintedStudio.com, as is all the bead gel and the mica flakes and the glass and the, the silver beads and the glitter and everything else. It's all on our website. And so are, by the way, are the wooden cutouts. We have these all kinds of patterns in these. So take a peek at what we've got. I think this is going to be a darling, darling sort of vintage feel stocking as opposed to so much of the modern that you often see me do. This is this is gonna be uh, a gift. I don't know who I'm giving it to yet, but somebody's gonna get a nice stocking for a Christmas gift. Now I'm gonna set this over to the side so it can cure up. I'm gonna grab my stencil because again, I'm going to take my scraper. I'm going to offload all that extra. Put it back in the container, just like you see here. And, oops, I missed a spot. And I'm gonna clean this up. Now the other thing is, I'm gonna go clean this stencil up now because it's gonna be a little while before I can use it again. And I don't want all this stuff drying on this surface. But the other part of scraping all this off is you don't want all this going down your drain. You wanna clean it off, put it back in the container, cover it up, use it for something else so it doesn't go down your drain. All right, let me flip the camera up. And I apologize for my hand in front of the camera every time, but all right. So as you can tell, we have had great projects going. So I can get that back up a little higher. We've had great projects going today. Um, I'm having a great time with all of this stuff tomorrow. Uh, there will not be a live again until Friday, likely. Maybe not Friday, because I haven't decided how much work I'm going to do on Friday. I'm taking Thanksgiving weekend like everybody else is. Um, if you want your orders shipped out by tomorrow, 
you can always send me a message. I had somebody who desperately needed me to ship stuff out today, and normally we are 24-hour turnaround. But if you need things shipped out tomorrow, you need to get the orders in by tomorrow morning because then we will get them out and delivered. UPS is, you know, they do their holiday stuff too, so we just need to get things moving as early as possible in the day. In many cases, things get to people in two days. We, I know if you wanted any of this for projects this weekend, you gotta get those orders in tonight or tomorrow morning so that we can get them out to you. Um, I hope if I ha don't see you before then, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, everybody. I hope you're good. got plenty of good things to eat and lots of good people around you. I know I can't wait to see the rest of my family. Um, and enjoy, everybody. I'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.